Hi everyone, this is Adam Stewart from stewartmedicine.com. I'm here to show you uh, some neat tools that I've made uh, that help with ICD-9 coding and billing. And this is important uh, for faux doctors, especially in light of the new uh, acuity modifier payments that are new as of April 2024. Um, so here is a fake patient chart. And I just want to give some background information on the ICD-9 coding that you might not be aware of. So if you look at any problemist, and you'll notice here you'll see some um, diagnoses that are in black and some that are in blue. The ones that appear in black are actually ICD coded in the background. So for example, if we double click on this, we can see that the associated diagnosis, the ICD-9 code is tagged in the background. Whereas some of the blue ones, if you double click there, they don't have any of that. So um, I'll show you a quick way if like it's a little bit cumbersome. If you were to go through your charts and try to like, you want to code this man, then you have to double click into it. And you have to add, a di click that to add a diagnosis. It usually will error because it's trying to search for this specific term. Um, but if you, and then you kind of got to search by a keyword or maybe the diagnostic code and then find the one that you want to do um, and, and pick. So that, that's too many clicks, too many searches. It's a lot of work for us to do in our busy, uh, visits, so it's just not not done often, but I did make a tool to help code some of these things So let's say a patient um, had a new diagnosis of um, Let's say a patient had a new diagnosis of Osteoarthritis, so I built this little pop-up toolbar called the CP or pop-up tool called the CPP coder So I could click here and I've got everything kind of arranged in categories the main systems uh, cancer and infections here, surgery and family history there, and I use that to kind of code and auto-populate my, my CPP on the fly, or when I'm taking on new patients, it's very helpful. So if we were going to look for osteoarthritis, we'd go to the MSK, and it pops up the, that section, and uh, we'd say osteoarthritis, and we finish, and finish. So what that does is you'll see now osteoarthritis is automatically inserted into the CPP and it's black so it's actually ICD coded in the background. So now let's say I'm, I'm doing this on the fly and I want to um, I want to I'm in this chart and I want to actually officially code this AAA. So what I want what I would probably do here is I go here I pop up the toolbar cardiovascular and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the AAA diagnosis in there. I found this to be the fastest way. Now here I have redundant um, lines here. So what I can actually usually do is if you highlight that in Control C to copy, and then you go over the actually ICD-9 coded thing and you Control V, it will actually copy that right over there on the fly. And then I can just I usually just delete that one. So I've done that a few times when I've had when I've been going through charts and want to maybe code an important diagnosis. So same thing we can do here is. If we wanted to code coronary artery disease, um, you would go there, cardiovascular, coronary artery disease, insert that as an official coded diagnosis, then I would copy that blue text, and I know, and then I'd go control V over there. And then I usually would delete that. Because usually when I'm when I'm doing my CVPs, I do uh, you know, I like to put the condition, maybe the year it started maybe a little bit of free text details, like here are two stents, and then I often put the specialist associated with that diagnosis. So that's again, uh, um, this is a work in progress, but I think this is a pretty robust list. In my in this CPP coder, I've got all of these diagnoses. So all the common cancers, cardiovascular, rheumatologic, psych psychi psychiatric, mental health, and I've kind of got all of those built into that tool. Uh, subject to evolve and improve as uh, as I work on this with uh, with time. Um, so now, more importantly for billing, this is again a fake chart. But I, I if you go into the um, background, I can see that you can see that I've actually fake billed um, this this fake chart diabetes a couple of times in the last um, few years. So this is again just fake data, but down here you can see diabetes was done November 22nd and I actually must have been playing around with the billing at one point because same thing November or sorry November 28th diabetes was also billed. 
So what I have reminders set in the, um, the background are I have reminders set for all these kind of unique diagnoses and um, all these chronic diagnoses. Uh, if, if, the, if the diagnostic code has not been billed twice in the last four years, so I made it four years as opposed to five years to allow a, like a one-year buffer for the new acuity, like the new um, chi-high population grouper will pick up chronic diagnoses within a five-year time frame. So I, I've kind of made things as a buffer for four years. And because diabetes has actually been, been built twice in the last four years, you'll notice that it's not actually reminding me here. But so if I see a patient, um, I mean, this is a little bit extreme with all these different diagnoses, but and it's a fake patient that hasn't actually been built. But as time goes on, then this will start to remind me, oh, okay, let's, um, you know, if the patient's in for a multi-issue visit and I address the anxiety of that visit, I'll you maybe use the diagnostic code 300 for anxiety. And the next time I might use uh, a Parkinson's if we address that too. And with time, remember this is a five-year window or a four or five-year window. Uh, we're gonna see this, th this list will get shorter and shorter, but it's just a tool to help um, aid in, in kind of, um, using multiple diagnoses to help better uh, code the complexity of our patients in terms of, uh, in terms of our billing data.